funds. Californians contributed more, about $708,000, and so did New Yorkers at $813,000. The senator also has received about $2.4 million from political action committees, or PACs, nearly one-third of his total funds raised. Tester's campaign notes that $12 million was spent by outside groups attacking him in his 2012 campaign and says he'll need the resources to fight back against a similar expected onslaught this next year. Tester says he'll be telling his own story to counter the false story his opponents will paint. We know what they're going to do. They're going to try to make me into something I'm not and then run against that person. They tried to do that in 2006. They tried to do that in 2012. The truth is, is we've got to deal with the truth, and if we deal with the truth, I'm going to be just fine. Also, when you look at Tester's potential Republican opponents in the Senate race, some are getting plenty of money from sources other than Montanans. Nearly two-thirds of state auditor Matt Rosendale's $434,000 has come from outside the state, and Big Sky businessman Troy Downing has received, at most, only 4.5% of his $492,000 from Montanans. 70% of Downing's funds are from his own pocket. 60% of the $168,000 raised by State Senator Al Oseski is from his own pocket as well. But he has raised at least $43,000 from Montanans, or one-fourth of his total. And Republican Russ Fagg? He hasn't revealed his funding sources at all because he used an exploratory committee to raise money before becoming a candidate last month. The former state district judge from Billings says he'll list his donors and spending when he files a campaign report in January. Let's face it. Montana's U.S. Senate contest is essentially a national race, attracting national attention. That means a pile of money will be spent here, and most of that money will come from outside Montana. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And from politics to skiing, for some people, they uh, traded their mountains of food for the real thing today. Big Sky Resort opened its season. Uh, people turned out in full force hours ahead of opening to take advantage of a start to the season. The addition of the covered carpet lifts uh, made the below freezing temps a little more bearable. Big Sky reports it's starting the season with a 21-inch mid-mountain base depth and 32-inch upper mountain base depth. Even more snow is possible tonight. And we go from uh, those freezing temperatures in the mountains to warmer around here. Bob's in it from the Weather Center. I'm shushing from one side to the other. Oh, yeah, Red Lodge, they open tomorrow. Bridger Bowl opens tomorrow. I think they open okay. like for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So Red Lodge, they'll be open. It's going to be great news. But we're going to talk about record highs. Today, this is what it was. These were our records around Montana when we started a day. Now take a look at this. These were our reported highs for the day. And everywhere you see a little red star, that's where we have a new record high uh, over there in Dillon. Up, oh, that just changed. That was 63. They got up to 64 degrees. So that's a new record high as well. So just about everywhere in the state, we have new record highs. It'd be easier to say where we don't. Uh, Cut Bank and Missoula. But look at Billings, 71 degrees today. The old record was 65, and we're looking for a little cool down tonight and a chance for rain. We'll chat about that coming up in a few more minutes. Okay, thank you, Bob. U.S. troops stationed overseas are getting a taste of home with a traditional. Thanksgiving dinner at military bases. Ben Lewis has a story from London. <laughs> Just 60 miles from the North Korean border, U.S. troops enjoyed the most American of meals. Thanksgiving dinner gave them a rare chance to relax in a region under constant nuclear threat. I do have family back at home. I have a wife and two beautiful daughters. I miss them very much, but I'm here now and uh, making the best of it while I can. With more than 28,000 US troops stationed in South Korea, kitchens had to be run with military precision. We stayed up late last night cooking about 60 turkeys, and we've served probably over a thousand uh, soldiers and families so far. In a video conference, President Trump spoke with military members overseas. I know I speak on behalf of all Americans when I say that we totally support you. In fact, we love you. We really do. More than 200,000 U.S. servicemen and women are deployed across the world right now. From Qatar. And I just wanted to wish all my friends and family back in Birmingham, Alabama, a very happy Thanksgiving. To Japan. I would like to wish all the Marines and sailors across the world a happy Thanksgiving. To Puerto Rico. Happy Thanksgiving! And when you're far from friends and family, a little home-style comfort food can make a world of difference. Ben Lewis, CBS News. The military sent nearly 100,000 pounds of turkey to U.S. troops base around the world. And more than 3.5 million people lined the streets of Manhattan to watch the 91st annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Security was tight for the massive parade, which featured 1,100 cheerleaders, 1,000 clowns, 12 marching bands, 
and of course the iconic balloons for which the parade is famous. Santa Claus also made an appearance to ring in the holiday season. And this Thanksgiving marks the seventh annual run for the uh, turkey run. Run turkey run, that is. More than 2,500 people participated. The run proceeds go to four local charities combating hunger in our area. Meals on Wheels, which delivers hot meals to homebound seniors. Family Service Incorporated, which helps to feed families in need. And the Billings Backpack Program, which provides nutritious meals for children to be fed over the weekends, all benefit from the run. New this year, the MSUB Yellow Jacket Emergency Pantry will also be a recipient of the proceeds, helping university students maintain nutrition and hygiene. Costumes are welcomed in the following uh, the race. The runners are provided with hot chocolate if they are of age. Uh, they can get some beer from some of the local Billings breweries and a collectible pint glass. Elder Grove School was present as well, selling kettle corn to help fund its eighth grade trip to Washington, D.C. An annual tradition in downtown Billings brings a celebration with the holiday parade. That's tomorrow night. Uh, the magic of Christmas and the holidays will come alive with the 33rd annual holiday parade. This year's theme, Elves of Santa's Workshop. About 100 floats, including a Q2 entry, will line up at North 27th Street and 3rd Avenue North on Friday night and will follow that uh, traditional city parade route. The fun starts at 7 o'clock. And still to come on your Q2 News, 